Oh. Yeah. The process sometimes is way more valuable than the product. My name is Georgia Fullerton and I'm an abstract expressionist artist and an expressive arts therapist. A lot of us don't know where our art journey starts but mine and, and what is an art journey anyway? An art journey is all of the experiences I've had in art from the age of two up to, I won't disclose my age, <laughs> up to now. 1967, my folks came up to Canada uh, from Jamaica. My dad came up first and was setting up as a new vice principal of the school in West Central Alberta. And so mom and me and my siblings were still in Jamaica. My mom used to write love letters back and forth to my father. And I was about age 11. And at age 11, my mom said, oh, Georgia, take a look at this. Here's one of the letters that I used to write your dad. And at the very end of that letter, um, she had said, oh, George, we miss you dearly. And Georgia wants to leave you a little note. And when I looked at my little note, it was a little scribble. And I just squealed with delight. And I said, oh, I was an artist from then. And so this whole fascination and this love for the arts was fueled by my folks, primarily my mother. When we were in Canada, they both decided that they were gonna get their master's in education. So they would, we would do summers at the University of Calgary. And during that time, my mom, who's an educator, but also an artist, she would bring those works back home and she would say, Georgia, can you critique these? Um, maybe title them. And I just thought it was the jazziest thing that my mom could create this amazing work. This is actually um, a copper plate that is my mother's and it's not dated but it was around 1974 that she created in, um, at the University of Calgary and I still have it, what a treasure. So time goes on, I'm getting brave enough now to show my art, I started to join collectives. And then I happened to meet somebody who took something called expressive arts therapy training, had never heard of it, but I was really curious. I took this three-year training program and that just opened up a whole new world for me. So I worked for the YWCA. I did um, a lot of community uh, workshops in shelters, um, did a volunteer stint at Humber River Hospital in the mental health and addictions, using the expressive arts with the patients and different clients. Um, so you can imagine my confidence is building, not only as an artist, but as somebody who uses art to heal. And the epiphany was, I was building a bridge. And that bridge was arts in health. So the many faces of my experiences brought me to understand something real. And it was that I am literally creating my art story. How exciting is that? Super exciting. Why? because I found myself here in Durham region with Station Gallery and in an artist residency. Let me tell you a little bit about what my residency is all about. So I'm titling it Reframed, Create My Art Story. I coined it as a reset. I coined it as 
something that's happening that's allowing me and others to take a second look at what you can live with and what you can live without. I needed to start from the beginning. I needed to start from gathering things that were important in my upbringing that related to art, the encouragement from my folks, my family members. Searching through all my stuff, crap in the basement, and I found some of my old printmaking images um, from, from Red Deer College, actually. And again, because you know, I was playing volleyball, so I was kind of always fusing my art with some of the, some of the work. So this was kind of a treasure to find um, some of my old um, etchings here, and I'll keep those. So the idea is I'm building a body of work that is, well, I'll call it a series. Um, so it's made up of seven pieces in total, and the idea is a creative representation of archetypes and including my therapeutic work in that view. So I asked the question, if suicide had a look, had a way of speaking or a way of moving, what might that look like? What might that sound like? And so I'm taking these ideas of expressive arts therapy and I'm taking it into this residency and I'm creating it in the way I see it. I wanna really start with, with um, where I started, which is this one called the identity. And when we think of identity, we, uh, at least for me, I think about beginning. I think about um, birth and starting over and not starting over, but just starting. Okay, where are you coming from? So my roots are in Jamaica. I was born in Jamaica. And so this piece is, of course, mixed media, like all of them are. And I just also part of what I do is like I, I have three, four, five of these panels set out. Um, I never work on one and just complete it. Sorry, don't do that. Um, I have to keep moving. Maybe it's my own little ADHD going on, but I have to jump from what I feel one day to the next day. As you walk into the studio, you're not gonna feel the same every day, right? So I really wanted to experience what it was like to take some of my old work that I had done in college in like 1983 and bring it into something new. Um, this piece, for example, actually has a woodcut print um, that I did in 83 at Red Deer College and again, I talked about that duality of the jock and the artist. Here's the image there. Um, it's a woodcut print and it's sort of, I, I titled it Figure Incognito. I sort of really had a confusion. <laughs> I had a fight going on with my athletic self and my wild, open, creative self. And so I tried to fuse both of those together. And as you can see, it's, it's in the left eye or it's in the right eye actually. Um, but this is, this is coming along, it's, it's fun, it's interesting. And I like when little accidents happen, like this actually looks like a cross, um, which is just me adding and subtracting color. And then I found a little piece of acrylic skin. This is not quite attached, but that also creates a cross. But I love when I find like, you know, those little surprises that say, oh yeah, that works in the moment. So this one is called Sue E. Side and it's dealing with grief and loss. Kind of what I said earlier about what can we learn from, from suicide? What can we learn about it? This is matched with the antisocial personality disorder. Why? It's a lot of times when we hide away, people don't know that we have these kind of thoughts. Nothing is solid on here, but I definitely knew that I wanted to keep it stark and very graphic. This one in particular is called the Drama Queen. And it's all about what's real and what's imagined. And in response to the fact that we have to wear masks, um, sort of what's real here and what's imaginary. So playing with cultural icons, culturally looking images, her culture is Chinese. This is, she's fully made up, which is amazing. And these kind of things, 
I go to like Value Village <laughs> um, or any of these sort of um, uh, secondhand places. I used to travel along Queen Street a lot and get these things. So this is like a, a Buddha mask. And the idea here is really just, if it looks really real, it looks tactile, um, but what is real? <laughs> you know, how does, how does this culture relate to this culture? And why is one covering the other? I want people to, to be able to sort of question what's going on. Aside from that, it's a lot of fun. This is the archetype, the binary. And it's all about neglect and validation. And I think the personality disorder that I'm matching it with is the avoidant personality disorder. Whether you see the title or not, it doesn't matter to me. I think one of the greatest things that I enjoy doing uh, when I'm creating or after I've created work is to hear what other people have to say about it. I live for feedback. Remember that, I live for feedback, <laughs> okay? So this one, um, actually I think in the process, this is the only one that I, I uh, painted, you could say live, um, but I did a, a time-lapse painting of this. And on the day, I was just inspired by, what was I inspired by that day? I'd have to look at the writing, right? Because I wrote about this afterwards. But um, other things that I do in my technique or my approach, um, if you can see this figure under here that's kind of um, masked by this fabric, this sort of decorative lace fabric. So this figure here is a collage. It's a print of a much larger painting that I did back in, oh gosh, 2008 or nine. And that original painting was called Vixen Bloom. Um, it was a time when I, I guess you could say I had a sexual awakening. I had, like I said, left my marriage, took up with somebody else, was hypnotized by the lovemaking, or let's just call it sex. Um, this isn't G-rated, is it? Okay. Um, anyway, it's about my life. And what I found was happening was um, the paintings that I was doing during a certain period in my life, they all had to do with significant people in my life, experiences I had gone through. And I just thought Vixen Bloom was interesting because I was, I was um, at that time in a place where this is all new to me. This is an awakening. I'm ascending. I'm rising. And it didn't turn out good. But nonetheless, I felt like I was neglecting who I was. I was not validating myself as a woman who um, deserved to be treated a certain way. And so um, somehow this informed this piece. Many of us have these great resources and strengths that we don't pay attention to. We don't think has anything to do with art, but actually everything you do has to do with art. My name is Georgia Fullerton and I'm an abstract expressionist artist and an expressive arts therapist.